It's the fastest growing developmental disability in the country. According to a new study, one in 68 children are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder nationally. But what happens when those kids grow up? During Autism Awareness Month, I took a look at what it means to live with autism far beyond the diagnosis. I feel like Portillo. Do you? Mm -hmm. okay, well, the one in Naperville? Yeah. It's Thursday at the Little Friends Center for Autism. Executive Vice President Patty Boheem is working with her client Steve on the computer. They're researching one of Steve's passions, weather. Patty has been working with Steve for the past two decades. Ooh, look at this. When I first met Steve, he was in high school. Part of it was just getting to know him and then to really work on what you do when you're upset and that it's okay to get mad, but that, you know, you can't destroy things. Steve, who has been diagnosed on the autism spectrum, has come a long way since his first day with Patty, learning ways to control his emotions through practice. One of the things that we do is we do some role play if he's if sometimes he gets upset about something, we, we worked on walking away, ignoring people that are trying to agitate you. Um, he's really good at self-talk where he, he just talks, him, talks to himself yeah. about being calm. If they bug you and I, it makes me kind of angry and I just want to walk away, you know, get a, don't want to get in trouble, that's the only thing. Autism spectrum disorder and autism are general terms for a group of complex disorders of brain development. Those diagnosed on the spectrum typically have varying degrees of difficulties with social interaction, verbal and nonverbal communication, and repetitive behaviors. Steve is just one of hundreds of adults living with autism being supported by little friends. They're going to church, they're working, they're going to recreation events, they are attending rib fest and fling and, and all of those same things that you and I do. Um, and we, that's sort of the fundamental reason we exist, is that people should have the ability and the right and the support to access their community and be a part of it. Naperville resident Matt Ferre was diagnosed with autism when he was seven. When you meet Matt, the first thing you notice is his vibrant personality. But he admits some social interactions are a bit harder for him. It is a source of great difficulty uh, when it comes to the um, many social interactions that I have on a, any daily basis. I have difficulty recognizing social cues. I have difficulty keeping eye contact while talking to others and also maintaining focus at the topic of hand. Foray, a North Central College graduate, is a slave to his routines. He eats his lunch at work at 1.30 on the dot because if he doesn't, he's afraid his whole day will be off. The first day of the college term was also a lot for Matt because the change in his routine but he says it helped him when choosing his interactive media studies major. My autism shaped my experience in more ways than one. It, while it made it difficult for me to focus in class, um, it helped me considerably when picking a major since it's, I've really had trouble finding out what my interests are. That's one of the good things about, about being autistic is you can't have a passive interest in anything. If you have an interest in something, it's pretty intense and fortunately that made you know choosing what I wanted to do while I was there much easier for me. In March, the Center for Disease Control released a study that said one in 68 U.S. children are now diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. That number is up 30 percent from just two years ago. And boys, according to that study, are five times more likely to be diagnosed with autism than girls are. It's a terrifying word. As a parent, I am consistently blown away by how the grace with which many of our families accept this diagnosis, head down and they move forward. But there's an equal number of families who really take a step back and, and they, they're reeling and, and they need support from their community. Landorf says there's no question that the numbers demonstrate an increase, but there's more to it. The numbers vary. In Alabama, the number is still one in 175 children. In New Jersey, it's one in 45 children. So then, as a clinician or as a diagnostician, you have to figure out, is it a matter of that community having more resources to diagnose? Are there environmental factors? There simply is no answer to that question. At Little Friends, children as young as 18 months can be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, much earlier than before. But because autism is a spectrum disorder, it's not black and white and the diagnosing process is equally as complex. 
Now the question becomes, is the increase because of that? Or could it be something else? There are actual things that are happening. People don't know if, it's, um, if it is environmental. Um, we're not sure if it is uh, chemical. Um, we're not sure if it's better diagnosis, which is why doctors are saying, why the scientists are saying, we don't know what causes it. So the growth does have something to do with better recognition. But beyond that, there is something really going on in, in our world that is impacting our children in this negative way. The real startling thing is what comes after that, and the scientists don't know what's causing it. This is a devastating um, uh, diagnosis that a family receives because it's lifelong. Many organizations, like Little Friends and Turning Point, provide services for adults on the spectrum to help them be productive, independent adults. Through our vocational services facility, we can provide job coaching, we can provide employment assistance, we can go as far as job shadowing, taking somebody into a community-based business. Across town, at Turning Point's Career College, students can get real-world experience to help them gain their independence. Susan Colgan's son, Jimmy, will graduate from that program this June. They go through daily living skills and they go through budgeting and they uh, teach cooking and they teach, um, you know, cleaning, keeping an apartment or your house. After that life skills portion of the class, students get hands-on experience with retail sales and distribution of major retailers like Office Max and Walgreens. We have corporate partners that we've brought on board who work with us. They they guarantee an interview when the students graduate from career college. Um, we, don't, we don't ask our corporate partners to guarantee a job. We ask them to assist us in the training process. So give us access to, you know, to your environment so that we can help these students understand what's going to be expected of them as an employee. Jimmy, you want to do a return? Uh, yes, please. That was one of the reasons that we um, contacted Turning Point because they offer to assist him in finding a job that he will be able to be more independent and uh, be able to support himself. Students get to learn on replicas of real Walgreens and Office Max stores, as well as an Office Max distribution center, which are all located at Turning Point's Ogden Avenue location. Because the employers are really partners with us and they see the development, uh, we've had 100% placement. Yes, it's been amazing. Reaching out beyond the autism community is the goal during this National Month of Awareness. The city has shown its support by proclaiming April Autism Awareness Month in Naperville. And whereas, although there is no cure for autism, there is early diagnosis and intensive treatment and training for children with autism. Even the Millennium Carillon was lit up blue to show support. Most importantly, it gives those living with autism the opportunity to share their stories of triumph like Matt, who received his bachelor's degree from North Central last June. I'm proud because I've been able to overcome my fear of taking risks considerably. Um, graduating from college was a huge hand in that. It told me that I can pretty much do anything if I put my mind to it. Or Steve, who was able to gain independence through his time at Little Friends. Now he lives at Little Friends in his own apartment. He cooks, he cleans. Oh, it's nice. I don't want to live a home with my parents all when I'm too old because it'd be too much, you know? The autism community here in Naperville knows that April is just one month in the life of a person with autism, but hopes this April they can raise awareness, correct stereotypes, and continue to foster success for adults living with autism. I'm Whitney Goodbread for Naperville News Extra.